So, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Robert Lucas, and I will be, and today on my YouTube channel, I will be giving a uh, product review of the Celestial and Travel Scope 70, which is inside this backpack. So, that is kind of amazing. It's portable enough to fit inside a backpack. But first, before I start the product review, let me let me start off by saying that there that there are some parts that I kind of substituted for the uh, original parts. So if it looks like uh, something didn't come with the uh, things, such as maybe the CD, the lens cleaner, uh, instruction manual, like the instruction manual you'll find uh, is not of the same uh, telescope, but it's the same brand. But anyways, um, so just those parts I had to substitute through out of the blue because the fact that uh, I don't know where in the world the original portions of those went. And so I got most of the pieces. So inside this bag is the Celestial and Travel Scope 70. The Celestial and Travel Scope 70 is a telescope that that is meant for uh that was normally meant for like landscape type stuff, but it's also used for astronomy. So first off, when you open up the bag, you'll have a instruction booklet, and then um, and then inside this little pocket portion, you'll have a CD and a lens cleaner, and I think a few other things. But uh, when you look into here, right here is the tripod for it. So the tripod is a standard. Uh, in type of uh, uh, photo, like photographic tripod. So, um, so as you can see, I can be able to extend it very, very quickly. It can fit cameras on here. It also fits the uh, telescope. And the type of mount that it's got is what's considered an alitazimuth mount, or also alit or alitazimuth, or whatever. But anyways, as you can see, I'm able to quickly open this thing up and uh, extend it. And then, as you can see, it's, it's about that big. And then I can take out this portion, which, by the way, there's a crack in this because the fact that I tried tightening this port, this knob up too much. So uh, you can get it about that high. So... Let me put the telescope body on here. The Celestron Travel Scope 70 um, is a 400 millimeter focal length, or about a uh, f ratio of about 5.7, if I'm not mistaken. So I'll just put that down, so that way you can see it a little easier. But anyways, um, on the bottom of this thing, it's got two areas where you can screw the tripod in right here and right here so let me start let me put this in here so it screws in pretty pretty easily in the step so um, to let you know oh uh, this telescope can be set up up and all that like within less than two minutes so um, the finder scope itself is not pre-assembled onto the thing, but the mount for it is. So, um, so let me, and then some of the features that it's got is, uh, like I said, a 400 millimeter focal length or a F ratio of about 5.7. That would mean that with a 10 millimeter eyepiece, it would give a magnification of 40 times. So another thing that it has is a 40, Five degree uh, rect image diagonal portion. So, um, and yes, the thing comes with a backpack. So, um, it comes with a CD called the Sky X, and, um, and it also comes with a lens cleaner and all that. So, well, I'm going to put in the 20 millimeter eyepiece, which that comes in like its own little case type thing. And then, uh, so there's like a lot of screws on this thing in a sense, but not too many. Um, and then one thing that I really like about this uh, 
telescope is that it's very, very easy to assemble. It's also uh, it's also good for your money in a sense. And so you can you get like a high quality you get high quality optics for a low price on this thing. It's sold for about eighty nine ninety five, I think. But anyways, the uh, objective lens is a seventy millimeter aperture. So that means that uh, in reality, the uh, amount of mag the amount of light that it brings in compared to the normal human eye is about um, let's see, dang it, wrong page, stupid thing. Oh, I left it right there. I think. Yeah. Um, the round. When you round it up, the 70 millimeter gives about 89.5 times, brings in about 89.5 times as much light as the human eye does. So that's all right. But it's not like your normal five inch telescope or whatever, you know, where you can get like a bunch of magnification on it and all that. You use the highest useful magnification you can get on this, I believe is like 165 times. So that's not bad. Uh, the 20 millimeter eyepiece gives a 20 times zoom. The 10 millimeter gives a uh, 40 times zoom. So it only comes with two eyepieces. Um, but you can also get filters for it. You can you can also get other eyepieces. But um, don't get yourself all amped up about this telescope because even though it's got the uh, 89 and a half. Uh, times as much light that brings in and the uh, 20 times magnification or the 20 millimeter eyepiece only makes like reduces that amount of light that's brought in to four and a half times the amount of light that our eye can see and then the 40 times the magnification is about 2.2 times as much light so that's and so the so I so in reality I prefer using the 20 millimeter eyepiece for things like uh, looking at nebulas and stuff like that. Um, whoops. And it's got like an alatazm of pan handle here, right here. You can move it up and down, screw it uh, clockwise, wise, and you tighten the thing in. Um, you screw this portion uh, counterclockwise. This loosens the uh, horizontal movements. Uh, when you screw it clockwise, it, of course, uh, uh, like it locks it, you know. Um, so overall, it's a really good design and stuff. The focus knob is right here. Or it's also got a thing here. Let me uh, turn it around. You may be able to. Dang it. But anyways, it's pretty easy to operate. Right here is a adjustment knob for the uh, for how uh, fast you want the focus, in a sense, to reach out or whatever. Um, that just kind of tightens the thing in or whatever. I usually prefer the thing tightened in so that way I can get a more accurate thing and not have it slipping out and all that. But uh, other than that, it's really good telescope design. Um, I prefer using the 20 millimeter eyepiece for uh, looking at nebulas, deep sky objects, and uh, also things like distant stars, like especially near the Milky Way or something like that. I don't think I've really viewed uh, galaxies with this very much. I think I, I don't know if I have caught a couple in the in the view of this or not, but I don't know. Um, but I like looking at things like nebulas and all that with the 25 millimeter eyepiece. Or not 25, but with the 20 millimeter eyepiece, which gives a magnification of uh, uh, 20 times. But the but the 10 millimeter eyepiece gives a magnification of 40 times, which isn't exactly ideal for looking at like especially dim nebulas and all that like I guess moderately dim I guess you could say but um, other than that it's a really good telescope um, well 
but just let me clear up something here. It's not like your norm. It's not like a five or six inch telescope on it where, uh, in a sense, like you can view dim objects with it, like really dim. You know, but when be able to get a lot of clarity out of it uh, at very high magnifications, like 300 times and stuff. Like I said, the highest useful magnification on this telescope is about uh, like 165 times. So um, if you were to get something like an 8 millimeter eyepiece, you can uh, get like a magnification of 50 times. Uh, I prefer the 10 millimeter eyepiece, the 40 times magnification, for looking at things like Saturn, Jupiter, like Jupiter and its moons. You can also see Jupiter and its moons through the uh, 20 millimeter eyepiece but I prefer looking at it a little closer and all that you know in a little bit more detail and stuff with the uh, 10 millimeter eyepiece but um, like I also have looked at things like the Orion Nebula through the uh, 40 times magnification it doesn't show up as bright like it doesn't necessarily show up as bright as with the 20 millimeter um, but other than that it's real good now you get a lot of bang for your buck you know it's only 89.95 for this whole telescope it's got good quality optics so um, and then one thing that I find interesting that you can pop this off if you need to clean the lens things and stuff like clean like get some of the dust off the lens or whatever every once in a while because every once in a while you might get dust on the lens, something like that, you know, and um, you need to clean it off. Well, taking this portion off like that, that can make it a lot easier. I mean, it doesn't pop off. Watch. See that? It doesn't pop off when you point it straight down or nothing. So, um, the one of the things that I don't necessarily like about this thing, though, is that even with the... Uh, thing with the vertical portion uh, uh, locked in you can still move it if you if you wanted to but in a sense that is kind of all right because like if you need to make minor adjustments or something like that but you don't but you don't have to fumble around or whatever and find this thing and then just because then they could make it really loose and all that and uh, but other than that it's very very good um, you got the finder scope here. That's, I believe, a five by twenty. Yeah, like it's a twenty millimeter uh, thing here, a twenty millimeter objective lens for the finder scope. And then um, I think it's like uh, probably ten millimeters back here. I don't know, but it's uh, it's a five by twenty, which gives a magnification of five times. But it's a 20 millimeter objective lens on the finder scope. Um, I like this thing because even because even if it suffers a bunch of bumps and all that, like if like for example here in the desert, you know, sometimes you'll get a lot of bumpy places. You may not think that a desert has bumpy roads, but we're in a sense in a small town in the desert, uh, Hinkley, California. So um, on Hinkley Road. I guess you could say um, there's a portion of it when it turns into dirt portion a lot of ATVs like to go out there and stuff but it's kind of bumpy and all that and even when and even when it suffers all that bumping and all that it's uh, it stays strong it stays put um, the finder scope barely goes out of out of its culmination or uh, in other words the alignment so um, it's a very good telescope. Uh, another thing that I don't necessarily like is that, uh, like I said, if you, like I had mentioned before, like near the beginning, if you screw this portion a little bit too much, then they could crack the thing. So you don't want to do that. Um, that port, that thing is designed mainly to lock this portion in, which just brings it higher. So that way maybe you could see it like when you're looking in there like that but um, it's a really really good telescope um, especially for beginners for those who are wanting to uh, uh, begin like if they're 
just starting out with uh, astronomy or something like that, and you can, like, uh, it's not like your complicated equatorial mounts and all that, where you have to uh, adjust the thing you got, like, and then on top of that, like, uh, the reflectors or whatever, because this is a refract, this is a common type of refractor telescope, which means that it just uses lenses and sometimes things like prisms or whatever to uh, direct light, no mirrors. A, reflect, a reflector telescope, or reflecting telescope, whatever it's called, uh, uses mirrors. And seriously, it uses mirrors and occasionally when, occasionally, maybe you'll find a few with uh, some portions of lenses. Um, but other than that, it's really, really good. Uh, so, um, to let you know, uh, this telescope is a little tricky to deal with, especially um, um, if you bring the height down a little bit, or actually if you have the height up like, like this, sometimes you're having to uh, do something like that or whatever, you know, especially if you're on hard dirt. So if you're on hard dirt and all that, or asphalt or something like that, uh, I'd recommend you use one of those pad type things for like knees or whatever, you know. Like get some sort of knee pad type things they can place on the ground. Um, another thing is, is that the 45 image, and the 45 degree direct or diagonal, yeah, erect image diagonal, um, it can get kind of uncomfortable when you're view, when you're trying to like view things like Polaris, because as you can see, it goes at that angle, and you're trying to look past the thing and all that. And if you bring this up, it makes it even worse because of the fact that you're that on top of having to uh, 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 look through at an uncomfortable angle, you're depending on if you're tall or short, like I'm short, uh, you may have to kind of be at an uncomfortable thing like that, you know, and, and all that. So uh, I think you can buy a 90 degree erect image diagonal for something like this on Celeste, like on Celeste Shorn's website, uh, www.celestshorn.com. Um, I'll put a link on the uh, video if you guys want to uh, research about the telescope more or um, you can just type in travel scope 70 for the search or whatever in the search area but anyways um, like I said it's a good telescope uh, the tripod is multifunctional you in some uh, projectors you can even use this for uh, like let's say home theater type projectors or whatever you can use use the tripod for some of them and then on top of that, um, like you can attach a camera on there. Like I've got that camera rolling right now, and I don't have the blue camera with me, so I can't really demonstrate right now uh, how you can attach a camera. But it's, it's got like let's say you have a difficult time, like you got fat fingers or something. You're trying to unscrew this. Uh, there's on this side a knob. On it where you can unscrew this one like that and then you can tilt it torn it where you can unscrew it easily so it's also got a level on it too I don't know if you ever noticed that um, I may bring the telescope tripod hold down in length a little bit but as you can see it's it's, it's not even heavy I mean, I'm able to rotate it pretty easily and all that, you know? Whoops, duh. But, like, um, it's not even heavy. You can transport it. You can transport it with you wherever. Like, practically wherever. You can just pick it up and just, like, maybe walk for a mile with it. But anyways, um, here, let me bring the thing down a little bit more. Um... So the camera battery may, may be running kind of low right now, I don't know. But um, anyways, 
Um, as you can see right here, there's a level on this thing, which, which can also be used, like, let's say, for, like, a, uh, a camera or something, you know? So if you want to put a camera on here, you can be able to tell if the camera's level. Um, so, I don't know if you ever were able to see the knob that I was talking about that is cracked. On where the thing is cracked, like it's cracked right down there. But this is the knob right here. So, um, like, uh, it's real good. You can, like, if you, like, uh, I guess you could say because this knob portion or the mount portion right there is kind of cracked, it will move around a little bit. But you're, if you buy the telescope, it's not going to come like that. Um, some people say, oh, oh, uh, uh, blackening the edges of the lenses will, uh, you know, uh, make the thing easier to, uh, it will make it easier or to see through the thing. Actually, no. It's fine as it is. There's a black, there's like a black coating inside the thing. Like a black non-reflective coating inside of the, uh, uh, telescope itself. So you're not going to have, like, light reflections at all. You, you really aren't going to have light reflections at all. Um, but other than that, it's like, other than that, like, there, I do have problems with the finder scope at times. Like, for example, as you can see here, um, like, I don't know if you noticed this or not, but like, uh, to adjust this to your focus and stuff, it takes a lot of turning, a lot of turning, a lot of turning, a lot of turning. You know, you got to turn, 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 whatever, you know. Um, so just to get it to your eye, to your eye's focus, you got to turn it a lot. Because I guess it's extremely fine thread. But anyways, um, like, also, if you do buy this telescope, caution, do not look at it. Do not look at the sun through that. Uh, if you want to look at the sun through this thing, use use a uh, objective lens uh, solar filter. One that would probably whoa, one that would probably clamp on right here or something like that, or be right here. Do not use an eyepiece filter. So this is the eyepiece here. You do not want to use an eyepiece filter. Because uh, those filter, because otherwise you're letting in light through the objective lens and going into the telescope. And right at the focal length and stuff, that can damage the telescope very badly. Um, the only time I've ever looked through, and through, like looked at the sun through this thing is uh, if I had welding lenses, which is not recommended. But um, yeah, I try to use welding lenses and it's like that. Ah! Especially when I don't have the welding lenses right in alignment. So let me check the battery on this thing. Um, darn, I don't see the battery. So, um, so this, so that telescope is very good. I suggest you buy, it, especially if you're new to astronomy or if you just want telescope for like even just like viewing things like terrestrial type stuff. Uh, not like extraterrestrial, but um, I also like viewing the moon through this. Um, now, an interesting thing that some people probably never think about is that the lens cover comes in two parts. You notice this big portion here. This portion comes out for an aperture, for like almost like a, almost like, you know, functioning as the iris does for the pupil of our eye. It kind of kind of dims, like it kind of uh, uh, gets all the uh, excess light and stuff out pretty much um, and it uh, dims some and it dims like very very bright objects so that way but it doesn't dim it too much but like let's say you're looking at the moon sometimes if you're looking at the moon especially with the 20 millimeter eyepiece 
it's going to be like blinding light practically sometimes. So you can use this to kind of uh, help you with that and be able to not uh, uh, lose your nighttime vision all that much. And uh, I mean, yes, you'll. I mean, yes, if you're looking at it for one eye and all that for a long period of time, yes, you're gonna. Yes, your eye is gonna adjust that, and then all of a sudden, so you're like stumbling around in the dark because one eye, because like one eye seems like it's like uh, you just see black in that eye, and then the other eye you're able to see. So um, I guess you could say that's one drawback of this telescope. Scope, but of course, how in the hell are they gonna make a, a how in the heck are they gonna make an adjustable type thing? You know, where you can adjust it to your own liking or whatever you know but other than that it's very very good like I said a lot of bang for your butt um, good telescope good optics pretty good tripod despite the fact that this thing is aluminum uh, like 90% of the telescope itself is like plastic the lens or glass uh, because of course glass has better optics to it um, the uh, tripod is aluminum. This is like plastic and aluminum. Um, it's got like aluminum, uh, like brushed aluminum portions here. It's got uh, regular aluminum rivets. Um, so it's a very portable telescope. It can also fit inside a stand. This is a standard size backpack to let you know. So the 10 millimeter eyepiece is like this thing right here. Uh, let me take it out. So I believe both of them are plosal type eyepieces. I'm not exactly sure, but they're still pretty good. So to take it out, so taking it out and stuff, taking it apart is very, very easy. You just uh, place in the one, just place in the covers there, uh, adjust the screws, whatever, you know. It can. They can fold, like in a sense, the thing can be taken apart and all that. They're like put together and taken apart in like probably less than 10 minutes. Not 10 minutes, but less than 2 minutes. Maybe 2 minutes at the most, especially if you're, especially if you're slow at taking things apart and all that. But, um, let me adjust the camera over here. But other than that, it's... Like, you can see that I'm able to just pop things in, whatever. You know, I can pop things in very easily. Um, now to, uh, then you can just pop that portion in, uh, unlock these. Like, if you want to do it really fast, you can unlock those things at practically the same time. Or like, uh, if you want to extend it out really fast, do it like that. And then, same thing when you're, uh, you might, this thing kind of sticks a little bit because of the fact that it's got some dirt in it after I tried looking through stuff with the dust storm. But, um, as you can see, it folds up very fast. Um, it's a very, very good telescope. When you're carrying the thing in the backpack, you barely feel any weight. Like, you really do really do not feel very much weight so um, it's a good telescope good optics as I mentioned several times so I'd encourage you to buy this uh, if you're new to astronomy or if you just want casual type stuff if you just want to casually look at things whatever uh, like maybe just like not necessarily casual astronomy, like just casual astronomy, but also just terrestrial viewing. So in the terrestrial viewing, I'd prefer you guys to use the 20 millimeter eyepiece, as that will reduce the amount of the blur. Like, uh, you know, the blur from all the other stuff. So I'm going to stop the video. So, goodbye. See you next time.